as Neil has mentioned. Uh, I'm a director of Community Energy England and uh, co-founder director of Repowering London and we develop community energy projects uh, in London. So inner city uh, focused really, uh, whereas today is my first time speaking to an audience interested in rural projects, so uh, it's a bit different. Um, and I think um, just to mention I think I'll, I'll probably touch it in the next slide. Uh, th this, um, I'm going to talk through, just to give a bit of uh, context to community en energy, talk about communi what Community Energy England does, um, and talk about you know, what is community energy in the first place, talk, go through a little bit of the journey, um, touch on the benefits, the challenges the sector faces, and what the next step and scope is for the sector. So a little bit about Community Energy England. We're uh, fairly... A uh, new organisation founded in uh, June uh, 2014, largely in response to um, the sector really requiring um, a, a voice to represent, you know, community energy groups across the country. So not uh, it's a national body, and we have uh, 180 members, and the memberships constantly growing. Uh, obviously, a lot of our members are from community groups. So around 70% of our members are community groups, but we've also got uh, local authority local authorities, you know, developers, community energy developers or, you know, intermediary bodies, uh, electricity uh, suppliers and independent energy companies uh, as our members. So it's quite uh, broad uh, and varied. So uh, to touch on what is community energy, it's great to see that a lot of you already have interest in it and are looking to develop projects in your own local areas. Um, so community energy, as many of you already know, it has, has a large focus on social benefits. It's less about financial gain. Uh, obviously, it has a, a core environmental uh, focus, but it's also around community ownership. It's about um, allowing local people to have a stake in their projects. And the community ownership generally facilitated through the legal structures like cooperatives, uh, you know, benefit community societies, and sorry, that's called community benefit societies, more popularly known as Bencoms, um, Kicks. So the various legal structures that allow communities to have ownership in their projects. Um, while there's a lot of focus on uh, renewable generation, uh, community energy is not only about generating electricity; it is about energy efficiency, demand reduction, management, um, and purchasing. So it, it is quite broad, though. Uh, you know, since the sector has developed, there's a lot of focus around. Uh, the generation side of things and that's mainly because that, that's a more mature area at the moment and we're looking at developing other models to cover the other areas uh, of community energy. Uh, and just to note, uh, while a lot of the projects are, have a geographical focus and are defined by a local community, there are some projects that um, you know, are connected by a, a shared aim and vision rather than you know, being in a particular area. That's about community energy and I just thought of highlighting um, shared uh, community ownership and this is a new model that's developing at the moment and maybe some of you are aware of it already uh, and it's largely about large scale community, uh, not community, commercial developers looking at um, investing in renewable energies and investing you know, in uh, projects up to 2.5 million pounds, them offering local communities a chance to invest in, their, uh, in the scheme. So it's, it's largely looking at you know, uh, community energy groups and small scale groups uh, benefiting from the commercial expertise, but also for the community to, to achieve the scale that's required for, for us to grow. So it's one to watch and we think there'll be quite a lot of growth um, in, in that area. Um, I just thought we'd you know, take a few steps back and talk about the technology. Uh, you know, we've been exploiting renewables, uh, sun, hydro, wind for, for thousands of years now. So it's not something that's new. Um, but in the last 200 years, we've, we've become better and more efficient in, in converting that natural resource into electricity. Uh, and just sort of highlighting um, Charles Fritz, um, solar array here which he developed in 1884 this didn't even have silicon in it so 60 years later silicon was introduced uh, and 60 years after that in the 19, 1960s we then had solar panels that NASA was using so just a bit of context here in terms of development um, this is uh, a wind turbine uh, developed by Charles Brush uh, in 1888 made of wood uh, 60 feet high. Uh, it was the first um, 
uh, automatically operated wind turbine and it was powering uh, Charles uh, Brush, his, his mansion. And so it was the first um, house to be powered by electricity in Cleveland. So, you know, we don't have to go too far back. And that's a background. We're coming back to you know how uh, the energy market system currently is. You know earlier, a lot of community groups and community businesses were developing uh, renew renewable energy, and uh, you know it's only in 1947, 48 where it was nationalised, and that brought together around 600 um, you know uh, community electricity businesses and formed the 14 uh, electricity boards. Um, and then, you know, the gas, we probably saw a thousand, you know, gas businesses being merged into the um, 12 uh, gas boards. Um, obviously, then they realized that wasn't very efficient. And so we had the privatization um, around, what is it, 1986 or something? 1989, thank you. Uh, and that's the system that we have today. And obviously, there is a lot of mistrust in the community uh, about the way it works. A lot of communities are finding uh, people are, are finding and um, struggling to pay their, their energy bills. Um, so that's where we are today. And we think community energy offers a real strong uh, transformative choice here, uh, where we're relying more on renewables and where local people have uh, ownership and a stake in their energy system. So where are we in terms of uh, you know the, the sector? Uh, you know how, how is it shaping up? There are around five thousand community groups uh, across um, across the UK, um, and that's that's an estimate. And the, but there is a strong focus on, as I said, uh, renewable energy in the generation. And there's around six hundred groups, uh, we you know interested in generating energy, um, and we we think that number is growing very fast. Um, Obviously, amongst that, not everyone has had a successful project. So around a quarter to a half of them have projects in development or have ha established their, their schemes. A lot of uh, community groups are based on volunteers coming together. And sometimes you don't see the project actually going right through from a development and concept or idea into implementation. Um, and they've obviously moved on to something else. But roughly, we can say... Uh, uh, there's around 66 megawatts of uh, electricity owned, uh, you know, community-owned real electricity that has been installed, and around 200 megawatts in development. So it's you know still still quite big numbers. A lot of these were developed um, through debt and grant uh, funding, and and we've slowly seen a, a larger shift now uh, in community share offers. So you know we've uh, we've seen around 40 share offers fund raising 17 million pounds from across uh, local communities and that's around 10,000 members so that's where we are today and DEC when they launched their community energy strategy last year um, they also did a independent uh, you know th they also commissioned a report um, doing an independent uh, modeling around the growth of the community energy sector and what it would look like in 2020 um, and there is an estimated looking at really favorable scenario we would see at least three gigawatts of community-owned electricity uh, being generated um, and that's across the different technologies of solar PV wind um, and hydro and that would represent around 14% of, uh, of the total uh, of all these technologies being installed across and that's around 1.4% of total electricity consumption um, and uh, roughly 2,300 community energy groups would uh, be developing have, have established projects by then but these these are numbers and they are forecasts they are kind of you know projections into the future I think uh, without you know without getting really bogged down into the numbers is it three gigawatts so is it going to be 2.5 you know it's more about uh, the potential of the sector and how it can there is potential for it to grow and it's not impossible provided the conditions are favorable and that we have strong policy and that we have strong strong support to make projects happen um, and you know with with that scenario we would see at least 500,000 members of of these projects and we would see at least 10 percent of uk households having a direct connection with their local community um, we would also see and we weren't able to do a um, social impact um, assessment but in terms of value back to the communities, we would see at least 1.3 billion pounds being invested back into, into the community. That's largely because community groups 
want to provide uh, benefits into the local area. So that any of the m a lot of a large proportion of their profits and income would be going back into the community through community funds, and that alone would see 1.3 billion reinvested. Um, and that is without talking about. Um, quantifying the financial value behind the social benefits and the environmental benefits. So while that is the, the, you know, uh, the ambition and the scope in our vision, uh, obviously there's a lot of benefits. Um, obviously about democratizing the energy supply, but also decentralized energy is what we're looking at. We are looking at more micro uh, generations. It's about giving local people a stake uh, and ownership and then builds in on the trust. It's about providing social benefits for communities. It's amazing how communities come together and you look at community cohesion. Um, you know, a lot of the areas that uh, I've worked in, even though it's in, in London, a lot of people who've been disengaged and feel isolated have come together and made friends and taken on a bit more responsibility in their local areas. We are creating, uh, we are challenging the big six and it, it, and it is about uh, creating a fair and more competitive marketplace. Uh, you know, it's about increasing the take up of renewable renewables where we're currently relying a lot more on fossils, fossil fuels. Uh, you know, it's about tackling climate change as well and about improving uh, the security, the energy security for future generations. Um, so there's quite a lot of benefits that community groups provide um, besides the obvious ones. Um, but there's obviously a lot of challenges for the sector as a whole and, you know, uh, a lot of the groups are volunteers who come together. Raising finance can sometimes be challenging at the, up, you know, at the development stage of these projects. There are challenges around grid connections. So, for instance, in the southwest, you might have plans to uh, install solar PV, but the grid doesn't have capacity to take flow electricity flowing the other way. There are planning issues, so obviously we need to work with planners and government, but while local authorities might approve on a planning application, uh, you know, CLG might, uh, might not uh, approve that, so there are those kind of tensions. We are working in terms of our financial models on a regressive feed-in tariffs, so it's constantly reducing, and so that there's a challenge for the sector as a whole in terms of uh, having fi viable financial models. Time skills, community energy projects take a very long time to develop and hopefully we're going to address some of that. And it's quite challenging at the current moment for community energy groups to be able to supply energy to their local, uh, to their local groups because you need to be set up as an um, energy supplier to do that. Um, also, while there's a lot of la there's lack of data, because uh, while we're trying to influence policy, we have to make the case for for asking for certain changes. Uh, and to back that, we need data. We need to be able to prove and provide the evidence. And so that's that's uh, another challenge for the sector, really. Um, I'm not going to touch on uh, the case studies because I know you've got a session on, um, on the case studies, but just to highlight, Balcombe, uh, the community came together because they were uh, against having fracking in their local area and as a result they developed community energy uh, and projects there and they're looking at installing at least five, five megawatts of solar in Balcombe today. There are many other co uh, community energy groups working across the uh, uh, UK, in, you know, doing a lot of great stuff around solar, biomass, uh, you know, and, and you'll hear some of the examples. But I just wanted to highlight two examples. Uh, Charles, uh, Charlbury Community, um, you know, they've, um, they're working in, they've got planning permission to install at least 4.3 megawatts of solar PV in an area of natural beauty. So their planning permission's gone through. So while there are challenges, there are also groups out there who are working through those challenges and making things happen. And another uh, community group to mention uh, is Cumbria Community Energy. Again, they're looking at uh, a hydro scheme and a solar PV scheme in the Lake District. So um, it, is, it is possible. Uh, and just to wrap up, uh, where we see the sector growing and, and the key areas uh, for us to focus on is really about uh, shifting from uh, volunteers. And while we recognise volunteers are absolutely crucial for making these community energy projects happen, there is a bit of support required and there's a need for building capacity where community groups are not having to reinvent invent the wheel and, you know, they can 
we can reduce the time scales for delivery of these projects and we can see more of the projects happen. So uh, a lot around you know, capacity building, you know, bringing a certain professionalisation to the sector. Uh, you know, we're, we're also relying quite heavily on community share offers right now and there's a need for us to create a, uh, a thriving social investment you know, sector with uh, some real strong rules around pr uh, financial promotion so that investors are protected and, you know, the integrity of the community energy sector is, is held. Um, you know, there is this thing around small and large scale. Sometimes small scale projects might not be financially viable, but we still want to see that happening in local communities and at a local level. Mm -hmm. So it's about, you know, enabling a sector where you have both large and small uh, taking place. Uh, we also want to see, you know, while there's quite a lot around uh, electricity generation, we want to see more schemes around energy efficiency uh, and, and, you know, look at heat projects and there are other areas that we should be developing new innovative models uh, that can then see more growth of the, uh, of the sector. Uh, and again, you know, one of the things we're focusing on is looking at collecting the data and providing the evidence so that we can make our case to, to change and adapt policy. Um, so that's where we are. And for Community Energy England, our, our mission is to really shift from uh, being just a niche, small, uh, you know, nascent sector to being the norm, really. And that's what we're doing, and that's what we're doing in terms of uh, advocating and, uh, uh, you know, uh, bringing expertise together and sharing best practice. So that's, that's it from me. Thanks very much, actually. It's very, very interesting. Thank you. Um, um, just wanted to note that I've put Emma's contact details there. She's the chief exec for Community Energy England, so any queries can be directed to her. Thank you. Thank you.